Hi, and welcome to Discover Oklahoma. I'm Lauren Nelson. And I'm Dino Lawley. Today we're coming to you from a very fun place, the Oklahoma City Zoo. If you're looking for a great day trip in central Oklahoma, this is a spot to visit. The Oklahoma City Zoo is open, but for now they're only selling tickets online. This allows them to make social distancing easy during the COVID pandemic. There's a limit to how many visitors can enter each day, and you can ensure your group can get in before you make the drive by pre-purchasing online. We'll show you what's new at the zoo throughout the show. But first we're going to talk about an Oklahoma staycation that is the perfect summer getaway, and it's not too far out of town. Jason Grubbs takes us to Tulsa's Post Oak Lodge. About 15 minutes northwest of downtown Tulsa, you'll find the Post Oak Lodge and Retreat, a 1,000 acre resort like setting, which welcomes you into the Osage Hills. You come up that long drive and you feel like you've gotten away, but it's not far at all. Post Oak is a popular destination for corporate retreats, weddings, and big family reunions, but they're also happy to host single travelers, couples, and small families. Yeah, you can come here if you're not with a big group, if it's just you and your family, or you and your husband, or your wife, or girlfriend's weekend, whatever. There are two lodge types with two room layouts, which are just like a hotel. Looking for a room this weekend? Yeah, we got availability still. We're not a luxury hotel, but we're not a state park cabin. We're the in-between. The executive lodge houses 18 rooms with queen-size beds surrounding a large common area. Plenty of room to roam around and still have your own space. There are sitting areas, a kitchenette, tables for cards, and pools. along with shuffleboard. And we have groups that book all 18. They want that whole area to themselves. You'll also find six smaller, cozier cabins with four rooms and a living dining area. And then all of the lodges have these really nice front porches. All of them have a front porch swing. And just like a hotel, you can order food. Our chef does a lot of catered meals, so you don't even have to cook if you don't want to. He even designed some special family to go menus. There's even a little place to pick up a quick bite. The Willow Cafe is open on the weekends. And they can get pizza, panini, salads, ice cream, snacks. We tried the turkey bacon panini. It was so good. You can certainly work up an appetite with all the stuff to do here. Starting with the swimming pool, complete with waterfall. Take a long hike on the trails through the forest filled with post oak trees. You can fish. We have two catch and release ponds. They'll lend you some fishing gear if you don't have any. And near the pond, horseshoes, volleyball, and a frisbee golf course. You can really get a thrill on the zipline canopy tours. Of course, you can also just relax and hang out. That goes for any time of year. Year round, you can come anytime you want. It is definitely a place to slow down. At the Post Oak Lodge and Retreat, I'm Jason Grubbs for Discover Oklahoma. Post Oak Lodge is located at 5323 West 31st Street North in Tulsa. Check out available dates on their website at postoaklodge.com. There are so many great places in our state that are just a quick road trip away. Another one is Tishomingo. Come along with me now to the Chickasaw Bank Museum and Johnston County Museum of History. Museums play a vital role in society and in our lives. They preserve local, regional, and sometimes a national experience. In Tishomingo, you can find the Chickasaw Bank Museum and Johnston County Museum of History. It's focused on heritage and culture. Led by a former governor of the Chickasaw Nation, R.M. Harris, he built the building in 1902, and it has its own fascinating history. So he was a philanthropist, a business owner, and all of that. So um, he and others got together and built this bank, and it became the bank of the Chickasaw Nation. So this was the actual de uh, repository for the Chickasaw Nation uh, and their treasury. Starting on the outside, you can see impressive granite pillars and a unique archway. The granite came from former Governor Harris's granite quarry. And, uh, you know, you see behind me this wonderful vault, this original vault. So we're just very proud of it because of its significance at the really those very early, early stages of when the Chickasaw Nation formed its government. And today it's now a visitor's site and destination. People come from all over and look and discover more about who the Chickasaw people are, the communities, and the city of Tishomingo. I think it shows the foundation of who we are. It literally does build the foundation of a community. 
And that sense of community came together as the Chickasaw Nation and the Johnston County Historical Society worked together to bring this building's history and significance back to life. So a great partnership was created in the 1980s. And so since that time, we've been working together to really create this, this destination so that people can come and really find out more about who we are here in Tishomingo and Johnston County. As you walk through the building, you certainly get a sense of Johnston County history. Alfalfa Bill Murray's radio and record player built in the 30s is on display, along with a cabinet belonging to Mrs. Murray. And as you continue to the next room, you will see some of the other famous people from this area. The first room now is our celebrity room. This is people that are, not, that are Johnson County people that are known internationally. And we have Carolyn Brown, who is an international author. We have Tiada, who went all over the world. Uh, and then we have Blake Shelton, he's known internationally. And we have Gene Autry. So Gene Autry was raised in Arabia. The second room downstairs is an impressive exhibit of Native American baskets and pottery, some which were loaned to the Smithsonian in 1929. You can also find Arrowhead Collections artwork in this beautiful eagle ceremonial piece. And upstairs you can browse through more Johnston County history. We have a lot of things up there that are unique to the building and uh, unique for Johnston County that people have donated to us. The Chickasaw Bank Museum and Johnston County Museum of History is a perfect example of coming together and connecting people from different cultures and heritage. We are preserving history. The Chickasaw Bank Museum and Johnston County Museum of History is located at 504 West Main Street in Tishomingo. They're open Tuesday through Saturday, 930 to 430. Of course, during the COVID pandemic, we always suggest you call ahead before making a trip to see if days or hours may have changed. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. Uh, everything we, we post here is, is fun and I, we think funny, so, uh, and it also shares what we have here. Meet the cowboy that COVID made famous in a good way. My only complaint is there's not one closer to my house. <laughs> so yes, uh, definitely worth the drive. That's right, a snow cone stand worth the drive will tell you where it is. Just like with our food, everything's made from scratch. All of our, we juice our own watermelon juice. We make all of our simple syrups. And one more reason to eat local, the hot spot in Norman where they make everything from scratch. It's all ahead right here on Discover Oklahoma. Start your next journey with the Travel OK Trip Planner. First, choose an itinerary or build your own. Share travel plans with friends and let the adventure begin. The Travel OK Trip Planner. Download the app today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Oklahoma City Zoo. We're in front of the zoo's new Galapagos tortoise habitat, located in the children's zoo area. The zoo is home to four of these giant tortoises ranging in age from 70 to 110 years old. The zoo is very well known, but one of its neighbors, well, you can say it's gone viral. Tim, the security guy at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, well, he made a name for himself during the COVID shutdown. Recently, our Jennifer Reynolds caught up with him. Tim Tiller never imagined a world in which there would be a life-size cardboard cutout of him, but he's having fun with it. Uh, yeah, I'd like to introduce you to my other brother, Tim. Or that he'd be interviewed by everyone from Access Hollywood to National Public Radio. He was just a regular guy doing his job as Director of Security and Operations at the National Cowboy Museum. Trying to manage the day-to-day -day business to, to help keep this building and keep everything in shape and keep people safe. But when marketing asked if he could help with social media during the lockdown, Tim was in. Hoping and expecting to reach a few people to keep them engaged in what we're, we're doing here and let them know that we are still, still here. Uh, we had no expectations of doing what we did, which is reaching worldwide. Uh, it's been fantastic. Tim's cowboy look, earnest bearing, and genuine admiration for museum art and artifacts were just what an anxious world needed, and the campaign took off, rocketing the museum's Twitter following from around 9,000 to more than a quarter of a million in a few weeks. Tim credits the marketing staff and coronavirus captivity for making it work. We saw Australia, the UK, the Netherlands. Uh, it was very surprising. We, we did not expect to reach that far. After an early post requesting Twitter tips, helpful readers suggested Tim use the pound sign for hashtag. 
That led to his first post with hashtag hashtag the cowboy, which along with his sign off, thanks Tim, became the social media signature of the world's most famous museum security guy. Yeah, I, th I think the fact that I, I'm just a security guard, that I'm just your average ordinary person, I think that definitely helped draw people in. Tim's daily posts were a quarantine ritual for many of us, wondering whether he was really walking the empty museum galleries with his campfire mug and coming up with his own hilarious material, or whether it was a brilliantly played media campaign was just part of the fun. Either way, it was a boon for a museum suddenly without admission revenue. The gift shop sold more than 5,000 locally produced Tim t-shirts by early June. We have sent at least one order, if not more, to every state in the country, including Alaska and Hawaii. Um, and we've sent several overseas as well. We've gone to um, Canada, Australia, England. I just sent one off to Belgium today. Um, so yeah, it's, it's gone worldwide. Tim is an international star. Tim's campfire mug was a sellout, and now there are ball caps and even COVID-19 face coverings bearing Tim's mustache, which has actually grown into a full beard. Tim says that's about all that's changed for him. I still go home to my wife and spend time with my wife and my grandkids, and, and, and uh, really no, none of that has changed. And so far, no problems to report with paparazzi. No, nope, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Mostly, Tim's just happy to keep working at a place that brings to life the American West. Uh, it's a very unique place to work. Not everybody gets to work at some, somewhere that they love. And if you pay the Cowboy Museum a visit, we're pretty sure you'll love it, too. For Discover Oklahoma, I'm Jennifer Reynolds. The Cowboy, as Tim calls it, is located at 1700 Northeast 63rd in Oklahoma City. Visit in person Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. or Sunday, noon to 5. You can also take a virtual visit at their website, nationalcowboymuseum.org. Now that's a great way to spend a summer day. Now another place you have to hit this summer is actually a well-known snow cone stand in Tulsa. Right now, Julie Chen takes us to the Iguana Island Treats. Iguana Island Treat serves up a taste of summer with a twist. All right, small pineapple whip, small tiger blood. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the Schaefer family opened this snow cone and pineapple whip business nine years ago to teach their youngest son, Brent, the value of hard work. We started when I was around 15. Um, the shaved ice is something I always, like I went and I visited other locations and I was always pretty infatuated with just eating and, and treats and so that's something I wanted to do at a young age and my parents were very entrepreneurial so they helped start this company uh, in which we ran together um, and yeah we kind of developed it into one of the leading shaved ice and pineapple whip stands in Tulsa. It's just wonderful. The old-fashioned pink pineapple whip is what Iguana Island is famous for. Whenever it's you're hot you can eat it and you feel I have lived because I have tried I know. <laughs> <laughs> you laugh, but you're serious. Right? <laughs> the pineapple whip is a secret family recipe created in Mom Gina's kitchen. It's kind of like a uh, sorbet. It's creamy, it's light, it's refreshing. Um, we make the whip, and then it goes into our machine, and it comes out real airy and light. It's really delicious. It tastes really good in my tummy. All of the products here are dairy-free and made with real fruits and juices. You'll find the popular pineapple whip and a specialty whip daily. And strawberry whips and coconut whips and we mix flavors and we do, we have fruity fruit today, which is a mixture of watermelon and strawberry and peach. Iguana Island is also home to the original pineapple whip float. Pineapple Whip Float is made with fresh, dull pineapple juice. It's really delicious and it's poured over our Pineapple Whip. If pineapple isn't your passion, you'll also find more than 65 different flavors of snowballs and sugar-free options too. Our ice is snowballs, the New Orleans style. They're super soft and we're generous on our syrup, so they're really, they're tasty. <laughs> My favorite thing is to get um, the Silver Fox, which is coconut and vanilla. I like to get um, snow cones in their pineapple whip and um, purple dragon. I would recommend uh, the, the 
pineapple whip. Um, because you can't get the pineapple whip at the corner uh, snow cone store. And one thing that really differentiates uh, this place is that, you know, they have this outdoor seating with the shade. And, you know, when I, you don't want to get in the car with the kids and the sticky treats and get all over the place or stand outside and melt in the sun. So this is really nice. Iguana Island Treats, a hot spot when it comes to frozen favorites. When mom says we're going to Iguana Island, what is your reaction? Yay! <laughs> That's my only complaint is there's not one closer to my house. <laughs> so yes, uh, definitely worth the drive. There are three Iguana Island locations, but this one at 51st and Memorial in the Fontana Shopping Center is the only one with a drive through I'd like a pineapple whip float, please. All right, pineapple whip float. Mm, that looks Thank delicious. You. Thank you. In Tulsa, I'm Julie Chin, Discovering Oklahoma. Iguana Island has three locations in the Tulsa area. Find them at 51st and Memorial, 71st and 169 in front of Lowe's, or in Broken Arrow at 71st and Elm. Coming up on Discover Oklahoma. The size of their slices of cake is just, it's beyond eating. It, it is wonderful. An Oklahoma tradition survives the COVID shutdown and starts something new too. We get a, quite a few people that are traveling up or down I-35 and look us up. And what they're serving up here has drivers getting off the interstate to grab a bite. We'll show you what's cooking at El Toro Chino coming up right here on Discover Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Travel Guide's got a fresh new look. It's your one-stop shop for awe-inspiring attractions, iconic Route 66, stunning escapes, and legendary local food. Get your free copy today. Welcome back to Discover Oklahoma, coming to you from the Oklahoma City Zoo. We're at the Mountain Lion Habitat now, and if you can't make it to the zoo, you can check out these guys anytime on the zoo's Mountain Lion Cam. It's a great option for those folks who need to stay home still. Now there's an Oklahoma City restaurant that's catering more now to those who want to-go meals. Come along with me now to Ingrid's Kitchen. Berlin refugee Ingrid Quitz started Ingrid's Kitchen in 1977. Now the iconic restaurant, bakery, and catering service remains popular. But if you visit with anyone around Oklahoma City and you say Ingrid's Kitchen, chances are they will mention all those delicious pastries. Uh, but that's just maybe 40% of what we do. We're known as a German restaurant, but we're more European now than German. Feathering our cap, we are now in eight homeland stores. And this new venture started just a few months ago. At the same time, they also introduced the grab and go. And that's basically what you're going to see at home. Prepackaged meals, quiche, individual quiche and large quiche, and a variety of pastries individually. Package. You can buy Ingrid's famous cakes right here though. Becky Horton decorates those cakes. I think she's an artist. She spins the cakes and decorates with style, ease, and precision. How good is she? I actually get people bring me cakes that are messed up and I, and I fix them. So, so you're the cake doctor. Pretty much. <laughs> Catering remains a big part of Ingrid's Kitchen's business, whether it's weddings, corporate, or social events. But it also comes back to the basics, where history, tradition, combined with wonderfully tasting, well-prepared food, all converge. We do a large variety of lunch specials every day and dinner specials. Those are always popular. We put them online a week in advance and so people know what to expect. Aside from that, the, our schnitzel is probably the most popular and then comes bratwurst with sauerkraut, red cabbage, and German potato salad. I love all of their food, but am particularly a big fan of their corned beef sandwich. Well, all their sandwiches, and I'm not alone. Sandwiches are wonderful. A lot of people don't realize they serve sandwiches here and uh, we really like it. Oh, the sandwiches today was great. And the cookies, they got numerous types of cookies to choose from. I've had several of them over the past few weeks, and uh, yeah, they're always trying something new, and they're good. Ingrid's Kitchen is just one of those places where their loyal customers like everything on the menu. It can be all of their homemade breads, their butterflake rolls, thumbprint cookies, eclairs, cream puffs, and cream bars. It's all just very, 
very good. And for many, it's sometimes difficult to decide. Whatever the special is that day, uh, you get dessert, salad, a roll. It's, uh, it's really good. I try something different every time I come because this is a different restaurant and they've got a variety that it's, you just have to try. Today, John was having not just a slice of red velvet cake, it was more like a wedge. The size of their slices of cake is just, it's beyond eating. By the way, you can get Ingrid's food to go. They also have curbside service and delivery by way of Postmates, Dine-In Express, Grubhub, and DoorDash. But if you haven't eaten here before, or it's been a while, you're missing out. They're missing a nice experience and a good meal. Ingrid's is located at 3701 Young's Boulevard in Oklahoma City. They're open seven days a week. Be sure to check the hours by calling ahead or hitting up their Facebook page. Up next on Discover Oklahoma, they were really good, had a little kick to them, um, big serving, so I have some to take home. When it's this good, you've got to get a to-go box. We'll show you this unique Norman spot when Discover Oklahoma continues. Why order a free Oklahoma outdoor guide? Uncover unique wonders, cultivate your curiosity, and wake up your wild side. Order or download your free copy today. We've really enjoyed our day here at the Oklahoma City Zoo. And as we head out, it is our duty to help another locally owned Oklahoma restaurant and grab some lunch. And Deanne Stein has an idea for us. Let's head to El Toro Chino in Norman. El Toro Chino stands for the Chinese Bowl, but the restaurant actually features a mesh of Asian and Latin cuisines. It's different. Brisket enchiladas and fusion nachos with wonton chips. Everything they do here is just very creative and unusual, I think. Carnitas egg rolls and shrimp empanadas over sriracha bacon fried rice. I thought it sounded odd to begin with, but it works. You know, it's good. It's fusion cooking at its finest, a style chef Jerry Reardon picked up from his time living in California and Mexico. It's really taking, you know, different elements of both styles of cuisine and combining them and using those ingredients that, that mesh well together. He and his partners opened the restaurant on the west side of Norman. We get a, quite a few people that are traveling up or down I-35 and look us up. Even a few of them have become regulars and stopping in a couple times a month when they're traveling. Regulars like Tracy Ellis, who drives in from Edmond. I was not familiar with the fusion type uh, menu before we got here, but it's terrific. It's been a great response. Um, I think some people that maybe don't, don't step outside of their comfort zone were hesitant at first, but then when they come in and see, it's just really a, a version of those two as comfort food, um, and it's something that's a, a very approachable. What was your favorite thing here? Today, the nachos. They were really good. Had a little kick to them. Um, big serving. So I have some to take home. I had the bowl, and it can be a bowl or a wrap, and it had shrimp and citrus rice and black beans, and you know, that sounds a little odd, but it really tasted good. For dessert, try the churro bowl filled with truffles mixed in a salted caramel gelato. The churro is to die for. It is the smoothest ice cream I've ever had. The restaurant also takes the fusion theme to the bar, where along with a 50 bottle wine list, they whip up some signature cocktails. Just like with our food, everything's made from scratch. All of our, we juice our own watermelon juice, we make all of our simple syrups, uh, all our fresh fruits, uh, combined just make some really classic drinks. They also do catering, allowing Jerry to create even more dishes. I like all aspects of the restaurant business, but I really like being a chef, being back there, um, working with my cr crew and, and developing things and, and, you know, really getting people, um, making them happy through food. In Norman, I'm Deanne Stein for Discover Oklahoma. El Toro Chino is located at 2801 36th Avenue Northwest in Norman. They're open seven days a week. Check out their menu and learn more at their website, eltorochino.com. And no matter where your next road trip takes you, the Discover Oklahoma Dining Guide will help you find a great place to eat. All you have to do is log on to our website, travelok.com, and click Request Free Brochures to get your copy. 
A huge thank you to our friends here at the Oklahoma City Zoo for hosting us this week. The zoo is open for business. They only ask that visitors pre-purchase admission tickets online. This way, no one drives to the zoo to find out they've already allowed the maximum number of folks inside when it comes to social distancing. And coming up next Saturday on Discover Oklahoma, no boat, no problem. We'll take you to an Oklahoma lake where you can rent one and be on the water in no time. Plus, we're hitting the mother road. See what we've discovered along Route 66 next week right here on Discover Oklahoma. So until next time, remember, there's always something to discover in Oklahoma.